All right, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing today on this Thursday, March the 4th, 2021? Thank you for joining me here tonight for another metallic episode of Music of Destruction. Bringing you the very best in metal-related content right here on YouTube on the only metal channel you'll ever fucking need. If you missed anything in the past week, click the eye in the upper right corner of the screen, get caught up on all my latest videos, I would sincerely appreciate it. If there's anything you want me to review, please make suggestions in the comments section down below, no slam, deathcore, metalcore, or modern fucking tech death. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell, so you don't miss anything. This is the hardest working metal channel on the platform, no one's gonna give it to you the way I do. Raw, unbridled, passionate, uncensored, and unfiltered. So welcome to Top 15 Thursdays here on the channel once again. So today I am doing my Top 15 Greek metal bands and this one was quite difficult to put together as their metal scene isn't as big as other countries. Yes, they have a healthy scene, but it's not very vast and I certainly think that all the bands in this list are among the best that Greece has to offer and I highly recommend any of them. All right, so let's just get into the video here. Coming in at number 15, we have Suicidal Angels Eternal Domination, released in 2007 on Old School Metal Records. This is a thrash metal band, and this album has so much power, passion, conviction, emotion, but it's also one of the most instrumentally impressive albums I've ever heard, and Suicidal Angels is one of those bands that really deserves your attention in modern thrash metal. They've played many different festivals, they've toured with some really big bands, and these guys deserve more attention than they get. I have to get some of their records. This is an amazing fucking band and this is a very memorable record. It's my favorite from them and it's definitely worth being in your collection. Number 15, Suicidal Angels Eternal Domination. Coming in at number 14 we have Drunkard Like Sin Explode released in 2010 on Surgical Diathesis Records. This is another thrash metal band. And Drunkard's kind of a band that likes to have a bit of fun with their music, but they also have a very serious tone, uh, political tonality to them. This is just beer drinking, great thrash metal that you can hang out with in the bar, in the backyard, around a campfire with your buddies. But it's also pretty thought-provoking stuff. You got some really great instrumentation. The production on this album <clears throat> is a little bit clean, but it's also a bit more organic, so it doesn't feel contrived or anything like that. This is an amazing album from Drunkard. It's definitely one that I feel more people should pay attention to. This is a great band, up and coming band. Make sure you check out Drunkard's Like Sin Explode gets number 14. Coming in at number 13, Biocancer Tormenting the Innocent released in 2015 on Candlelight Records. This is another thrash metal band. Biocancer's kind of in the vein of Toxic Holocaust. You can certainly hear a lot of toxic holocaust influence in biocancer but they have their own identity but you can certainly tell where they got their influences from and tormenting the innocent is one of those albums that will become instantly memorable it's very emotional passionate convicted and there's a lot of great lyricism great songwriting structure composition amazing instrumentation and the production on this album is absolutely fucking fantastic and gives the record its own identity number 13 biocancer tormenting the innocent Coming in at number 12, Godless, Let There Be Darkness, released in 2002 independently. This is a very obscure death metal band from Greece, and I've got to get uh, some of their stuff. I heard them a long time ago, and I instantly fell in love with this album. It is extremely atmospheric for death metal, and it's definitely one that's going to be very memorable because it separates itself from the typical death metal formula and has a lot of nuances and peaks and valleys and a lot of great deal of emotion as that occult anti-christian theme and feel is very intact on this album it's absolutely fucking incredible belongs in your collection as well number 12 godless let there be darkness coming in at number 11 necromantia crossing the fiery path released in 1993 on osmos productions a very og second wave black metal band Coming out of Greece, Necromantia has a massive discography. They toured with some really big bands. They played a lot of festivals. Extremely atmospheric, but also very occult in nature. Uh, this is an amazing album full of a lot of powerful emotions and cold, icy guitars. Very raw production, and it's one of the best fucking black metal albums I've ever heard. And Greece has a pretty healthy black metal scene, as most of the albums in this list are going to be black metal. So yeah, lots of great stuff coming out of Greece, but Necromantia is crossing the fiery path. Definitely one you're going to want to check out. 
Coming in at number 10, Varathron, His Majesty at the Swamp, released in 1993 on Cyber Music. Another second wave black metal band from Greece. This go these guys are very obscure. I don't hear many people talking about them within uh, message boards and stuff like that. This album is extremely atmospheric. It's fast, but it's also got a slower uh, mid-tempo to it as well. And it's kind of got a black and roll feel in some places in my opinion, but it's very atmospheric, dark, ominous, and extremely unsettling in a lot of places. This is an amazing fucking band. Verathron, His Majesty at the Swamp gets number 10. Coming in at number 9, we have an all-female black metal band, Astarte with Doomed Dark Years, released in 1998 on Black Lotus Records. They were black metal early, they became melodic uh, black goth metal later on, I believe. This is an amazing fucking album, and you can definitely hear that primitive influence on this one. A lot of Dark Throne influence, some Bethlehem influence, that kind of thing going on. And these chicks know how to make fucking black metal, and this is an album that will command your attention. It's very atmospheric and hypnotic and dark, ominous and hateful. Very aggressive stuff here and just very primal in its delivery, very raw production. So yeah, Astarte's Doom Dark Years is definitely one you're gonna wanna check out, gets number nine. Coming in at number eight, Eons in Solitude, Morning Cloak, released in 2020, so a brand new album last year on Rock Company, Company Records. This is a gothic doom metal that really incorporates a very sorrowful funeral atmosphere but also very beautiful and enchanting and romantic great instrumentation songwriting production lyricism and I get a lot of really powerful emotions on this fucking album and it's definitely one that you're gonna want to check out because it's absolutely awesome eons in solitude quite obscure you might have some trouble tracking this one down but it's definitely worth picking up Coming in at number 7, Decemberance Conceiving Hell, released in 2017 on Endless Winter Productions, a doom death metal band, but this is not typical doom death metal. This leans this leans far more towards the doom metal side of the two genres. And this is downright psychotic and insane, mentally deranged doom death metal. And it's really a terrifying album in a lot of ways. It's very experimental, it's very avant-garde. But yeah, this one really fucked with me and you just gotta hear it because it's very hard to articulate what's going on in this record and what's being brought forth. But I guarantee you, you're gonna enjoy the experience. Decemberance, Conceiving Hell gets number seven. Coming in at number six, Echoes of Decay, Dive Into Darkness, released in 2019 independently atmospheric death doom metal and these guys do it right and this is a very decaying morbid uh, macabre album with a lot of sorrowful atmosphere but it's also got some fast heavy parts very aggressive but also very sorrowful and melancholic uh, these guys do the two genres right as death doom metal especially atmospheric death metal and doom metal can be very hard to pull off in a convincing fashion but also the production of this album helps that a lot as it's not very clean at all and gives a very ethereal atmosphere to this album very otherworldly record great stuff echoes of decay dive into darkness gets number six coming in at number five sad a curse in disguise released in 2007 on regimental productions this is a black metal band from greece these guys are one of my favorite in the greek black metal scene i've got their album a curse in disguise I have to get it on CD. Uh, this is an amazing fucking album. Now, a lot of people didn't really dig this as they thought it was kind of a juxtaposition in a lot of ways, but this borders on DSBM, but it's also very chaotic and frantic and ethereal, and it's not quite DSBM, but it could be, because this is a band that's just full of misanthropy and despair and hatred and isolation and suicide. So yeah, an amazing fucking record. Coming in at number four, Analixi CH20, released in 2014 on Kill the Light Productions. This is atmospheric, depressive, suicidal black metal. And this album is something of a psychedelic anomaly in a lot of ways, and this borders on black noise in places, but it's also extremely dissonant and hypnotic, non-traditional songwriting and song structure as with most black metal, but this one pushes it a bit further and it can be a very difficult listen for some people, but for freaks like me, this is fucking one of the best albums I've heard coming out of Greece in a very long time. So you're gonna wanna check out NLXC's CH20 Gets number four. 
Coming in at number three, A Diadem of Dead Stars, the Mistbearer released in 2015 on Pest Productions. Atmospheric black metal done right with a lot of emphasis on creating uh, a serene atmosphere, isolation out in the middle of nowhere in a forest perhaps. Uh, this is some of the greatest stuff I've heard in a long time that's come out of Greece. A Diadem of Dead Stars, The Mistbearer will make you think. It's a very reflective album, it's very powerful, but it's also instrumentally composed with fucking perfection and the riffs, drum work and all that stuff is really gonna make you feel the emotions conveyed. This is a very emotional record as well. It's absolutely fucking incredible. Coming in at number two, Darshan, The Stygian Black Beyond, released in 2015 on Kunstosh Productions. This is cosmic black metal in the vein of dark space but different it's a little bit slower and it's just one guy doing it and uh yeah this is some of the best cosmic black metal i've ever heard it's very fucking chaotic but it's also very isolated and still in a lot of ways the guitars are so goddamn ice cold that it will send chills down your fucking spine it's kind of a difficult album to get through for the lax listener but for people like me it's fucking perfect i absolutely love it Gets number two, Darshan the Stygian Black Beyond. Coming in at number one, Doddsford, Suicide, and the Rest of Your Kind Will Follow, released in 2009 on Moribund Productions. His attempt at DSBM, although most of his stuff can be considered depressive black metal, but his other stuff is a lot faster. This one is a pure depressive black metal album, and the emotions and passion and hatred and misanthropy on this album are fucking perfect. The production is raw, but also clean enough to hear all the instrumentation. And the hypnotic, dissonant atmosphere of this album will stick with you for fucking ever. And Doddsford is a fucking god, and he's my favorite Greek metal artist, and I definitely have to get a lot of his stuff, but Suicide and the Rest of Your Kind Will Follow is my favorite album from Doddsford. Gets number one, so... There you have it guys, another top 15 in the books here on Music of Destruction. As always, I sincerely hope you enjoyed tonight's premiere. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss anything. Over on Twitter and Instagram, Music of Destruction. The Facebook group is open to anybody who wants to talk about metal. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Music of Destruction. My Teespring store is up. I got 13 items up. I'm working on some new stuff this week. I always work on new merch. Teespring.com forward slash Music dash of dash Destruction. Go and check that out. You will not be disappointed. I got a lot of ladies wear on there as well as men's wear. And uh, yeah, so go check that out. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Music of Destruction. You get access to exclusive content. My podcast the Seed Episode 30, The History of Iron Maiden Part 3 up on there. I am doing The History of Thrash Metal Part 1 this weekend, so look forward to that. Thrash Metal is going to be a great podcast co topic to cover. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy that. Your support, of course, going to new things like equipment, lighting cameras, uh, green screen stuff, all that, uh, and helps keep this channel going, and it shows me that you love how much work that I put into the content. Speaking of which, Colton James and myself got the cameras in, our Sony HD uh, digital camcorders have arrived. We were out doing some filming last night, just practicing, getting used to the cameras. It was a lot of fun. We're doing movie and game reviews with reviews on the run. It's going to be fucking awesome. We're building a studio out in the living room. So let's check out a new promo clip he worked really hard on of what you can expect on the new channel. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? 
And we are back. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Subscribe, like, comment, share the video. Have an awesome night, and we will see you guys for Metal Album Warfares. Cheers, everybody.